My name is John Osborne. I'm a cardiologist. Um, I like to call myself a preventative cardiologist. So my particular interest is really how do we identify people who have early problems and issues and use some of the amazing technology we have access to and then make sure that they never end up having the consequences of what we call heart disease. So my main professional goal is to identify people at risk for that and then make sure that those issues never occur. Initially, I wanted to be a fighter pilot. My dad was Air Force, retired Air Force. He flew bombers in World War II. Um, so my first career goal was fighter pilot. About fourth grade, I found out I had to wear glasses and I realized that's not gonna happen. So as it turns out, my mom was a nurse and I think at that point, uh, because of you know, influence my mom, uh, I said, hmm, maybe I'll look at medicine. And really from that point on, that, that, that's the, the course that I plotted. So when I was in high school, I found out there's a number of programs that allow you to cut some years off of undergrad. There was one particular program with Penn State, because we lived in Pennsylvania at that time, and uh, Jefferson Medical College, which is in Philadelphia, where you could apply, and if you get accepted, you do a year of undergrad, and then go on to medical school the next year. So that answered the question, plus save three years of time and a boatload of money, and got me to medical school where I really wanted to go. First year of medical school, you do anatomy, physiology, you learn structure and function. And my physiology professor, who led up the department, his main interest was cardiovascular cardiology, physi cardiovascular physiology. And I thought the stuff was great, the topic was fascinating, it was a great teacher. And so I approached him, and then, long story short, I decided to go ahead and get a PhD in cardiovascular physiology under him. Uh, so I went ahead and did that. So I, I ended up being able to get you know, my, my MD and my PhD in seven years and then was able to get my undergrad in a year and eight years later I had all three degrees and headed off to my next step of training. So from the point I decided to get my PhD in cardiovascular physiology, it really, I, I hate to say, didn't limit my options because I, I, what I do I, I love, wouldn't do anything else, but basically I was either going to go on the surgical side or the medical side. So in medicine, medicine means diagnosis and, and you know, early diagnosis and, and medical treatment and medications and such. And in cardiology, that also implies things like stents and all that. And then surgery would be the cardiac surgery, the people who do your bypass surgeries and heart valves replacements and all that. So medical school, as I'm trying to figure out which path I want to go down, um, did, I did rotations through cardiac surgery and cardiology and basically really found I like the the medical side, the cardiology side. That was much more my, my, uh, my interest. Uh, it, it's really working with people over long periods of time, getting to know them well, taking care of them. You're seeing them you know, from time to time. Where surgery is kind of, they come in, they're sick, you do your thing, they're out of there, you're out of there. And, and I, I really like working with people and working with them long term and, and resolving issues and problems. As a cardiologist, of course, you know, I, I deal with all kinds of cardiovascular issues. Um, or my, my ongoing joke is I'm really just a general contractor. I do electrical, I do plumbing. So if you think about the heart, it, it's got electrical issues, heart rhythm issues, what we call arrhythmias. And then the other big part of the heart, of course, is, is plumbing. So when people talk about blockages and narrowings when they have heart attacks or angina or chest pain, all of that would be what I'll call a plumbing category. A lot of my, my work has been in how do we use tools to identify people early, long before they really get in trouble. Historically, our approach was we wait until people are in serious trouble, generally after some kind of acute catastrophic event, and then we say, oh no, you need $100,000 bypass surgery, you need $50,000 worth of stents, you need a $20,000 heart catheterization. But every time that occurs, I'm thinking this problem that led up to your having a severe blockage that needs some mechanical fix, balloons or stents or bypass surgery, well, well honestly, that problem didn't start the week before, the year before, probably even the decade before. It had been festering 
for probably 20 to 30 years or more before it ever manifested as symptoms. And that really got me to think, are there tools, are there, is there a way that we can identify those people early and change their trajectory, change their course? And that's really, to me, what motivates me, and that's my passion, because for so long, we've sacrificed half the men, two-thirds of women. Of those that don't die with their first symptom, again, surgeries, procedures, complicated things, risks, that frankly, we just don't have to deal with anymore. When one takes the boards, by the way, they don't last forever. You take them, and they're good for 10 years. So now at this point, I've not only certified, become board certified in internal medicine and cardiology, but also then 10 years ago, recertified, and I'll be recertifying again for the next 10 years. I think that the, the value of that though is, first of all, it, it's, it says that you really invested in what you want to do. You want to maintain currency. You want to be up to date. I do that anyway, because it's about my patients. However, it, it really is kind of, it, it's a lot of work, it's a lot of money to do that, but honestly, it's a lot of fun because it forces me to ensure that I really am up to date. I, I, I'm very current with the literature. I, I take pride in doing that anyway, but I, I love to know that, that I am up to date. And, and it's sort of a third party that says, yeah, you know, do you know your stuff? Um, and so I, I think there's, there's great value to that. I, I hope th that I would be doing it anyway. I, I, I think I do. But still, it, it is nice to go through the process and get another piece of paper on the wall. And uh, now actually I've gone to wallpaper uh, at this point with these things. But I, I think it is very worthwhile. And then beyond that, there are other certifications. So I actually have uh, a total of seven of these certifications, so internal medicine, cardiology, and then you can also become certified in, in uh, uh, hypertension, so high blood pressure, in lipids uh, or cholesterol disorders, uh, also cardiac CT angiography, which is on the imaging side, also nuclear cardiology, which is kind of your stress testing tools, and then also echocardiography or cardiac ultrasound. So I also have certifications in all of those areas as well. Partly is, I guess it's a little bit of professional ADHD. I, I, I hate to, can't settle down on one thing. I like to always constantly learn and, and uh, feel like I'm up to date. Being a top 10 MD, it's a great honor. It's wonderful to be recognized by other people and your, your professional colleagues. And um, it, it's, a, it's a tremendous honor. But I, I never aspired to do that. Hopefully you're good enough at what you do that that then naturally occurs. You know, for me, I do, what I do for my patients. And if I'm not there at 120%, being able to deliver, being with, there with the latest data, the latest tools, being able not only have that information and knowledge to bring to the table to help my patients, but also to be able to communicate that in a way that anyone can understand. So that's why standards are so important. Hopefully those standards are internally inspired, not externally inspired. Um, and for me, at the end of the day, it's about the patients. So uh, I, I want to know that I'm there fully prepared to do whatever I can to take care of my patients.